Hello and welcome to my channel, I'm Vornax and today we are continuing our Fashion Wants campaign with the charismatic Char. As I did with the human avatar, I will be creating 18 sets, 9 for the male and 9 for the female character model. So there will be 3 heavy, medium and light armour sets for both of the body types. I will feature my two favourite sets at the end of the video. Here is my standard disclaimer. These are my picks with the skins I have unlocked. I do not have all the skins. I don't even have all the ones that I would really like. I'm especially lacking in the medium armor department as well, so please bear that in mind. Also, as ever, beauty is very much in the eye of the beholder, so my Fashion Wars flair may well fall flat and fail to impress. Please do let me know in the comments below which sets you loved and which sets you downright loathed. If you would like to share your char avatars in all their glory, you can link your images in the comments below or tweet me at Crichton underscore Herald and I will share them out across the Twitterverse and beyond. Now please note there will be a pinned comment on this video where you will find links to every armour and dye used here. So if you see any skins and colours that take your fancy, you know where and how to get them. Before I jump in, I have to say that this race has been one of the most challenging to style and at the end of the video I will highlight some of the issues I ran into and why I think ArenaNet needs to show this brilliant race some badly needed time and care. But enough of that, you came here for some char eye candy and I hope my efforts don't disappoint too much. So let's jump in, starting with the male necromancer who is wearing laced on armour in every slot but the head where I have used the skull mask. I wanted to create a bone armour look using the lemon tint dye on the laced on set to match the brilliant pattern on the skull mask. The skull mask is a character creation skin you can unlock when creating a necromancer. The laced stone armour can be a reward from the Heart of Thorns Dragon Stand map meta, but you can also unlock it by collecting map currencies too. The vendor is located on the Dragon Stand map here. The dyes used are Lemon Tint, Midnight Bronze and Shadow Turquoise. For the female necro, I have gone for a Heart of Thorns set with a twist, using the bladed armour for all but the head slot, where I used Abaddon's mask. This is a little over the top, but I love the animations of the mask and the tentacles are kind of creepy and hypnotic. <laughs> the bladed armour is again a map reward slash collection set from Verdant Brink map here and the mask is a gem store item. The dyes used are Shadow Abyss, Bloodstone Dark Violet and Bloodstone Coral. On to the male Mesmer in a throwback to the ritualist of factions using the Magus Shroud to mask the eyes with the Houndskin mantle on the shoulders and the ascended illustrious armour set in the remaining slots. The Magus Shroud is a Char Tier 3 cultural armour sold in the Black Citadel here. The Hound Skin is a reward for completing one of the Season 3 story achievements. The illustrious Ascended armour set is crafted. Links to everything in the pinned comment below. The dyes used are Shadow Abyss, Pitch and Black. For the female Mesmer again, I have gone for a ritualist inspired look, but this time with a light monochromatic style. This look demonstrates handily the difference your colour palette can make. The skins used are Mega Shroud, but this time matched with the radiant shoulders and gloves. The illustrious chest, seer pants and heritage boots finish off this look. I love the white and silver contrast details and of course the radiant glow. Anything but shiny for me. <laughs> the Magus is tier 3 char cultural armour. The radiant shoulders and gloves are gained by accumulating achievement points. There is a link to all possible achievement point rewards in the pinned comment below. The illustrious chest is a crafted item. The seer's armour set can be purchased on the trading post 
and can be gained also via rewards from the core Tyrian maps. Finally, the Heritage Boots are a Hall of Monument Achievement Reward. And now, Heritage Skins are earned in the original Guild Wars campaigns, like Prophecies and Nightfall, but it is still possible to unlock all of them today. There are links below to anyone interested in that, and I will say I loved playing through the old world, and I think it's well worth your time, but a completely different experience than Guild Wars 2. The dyes used for this set are Dry Silver, Shadow Abyss, and Permafrost. Onwards to the Male Elementalist. Now, this is a rare burst of colour in the Char lineup. I tend to enjoy the extremes, either Blinding Glow or Shadow of the Abyss. So, jumping into the colour palette was, was kind of fun here. In the head slot, I use the Demon Mask with Shadow of the Dragon shoulder pieces, Invoker's Chest, and Hellfire Vam Bracers. The leg slot is filled by the feathered pants, and in the boot slot, I have used the Order of Whispers light armor. I love the mask effect, bleeding onto the teeth. Sadly, this only seems to happen in the male avatar for some reason. I have no idea why. This look has a real pyromaniac feel to it, with the gem star Shadow of the Dragon shoulders, Char Cultural Tier 1 Invoker chest, and the Hellfire Van Braces, which are again gained from achievement point accumulation. The legs are crafted feathered armour, which can be purchased on the trading post, and the look is finished off with Order of Whispers light armour boots. To purchase the Tyrian Order armours, from the Priory, the Vigil, and the Order of Whispers, your characters must be aligned to these orders. This is done via the personal story, so to unlock all the sets, you must have completed the first part of this story on three different characters. There is a link below to the wiki talking about the Orders of Tyria. The dyes used are Burgundy, Wrath, Amber, Shadow Abyss, Shadow Red, and Elune. The female elementalist is another fire starter with the flame kissed chest, gloves, and legs. The head slot is the bloodstone visage, and the shoulders are from the phoenix set. The boots are heritage, but they are mostly hidden, so any skin would work. The bloodstone visage is a living world season 3 achievement, links below, and the other items are from the gem store. The dyes used are molten, shadow red, and bloodstone coral. I found it very difficult to find chest pieces which did not clip with the tail for the medium sets, so please forgive me for using so many gem store items throughout the Char campaign. There are non-gem store chests which do not clip, but I didn't want to keep reusing the same skin over and over again, or any more than I already do with my obsession with certain skins. I do have my favourites, you're going to see them, you're probably going to be sick of them by the end of this video. For the male engineer, I have tried to get the quintessential engineer look with the eagle eye goggles and the Magitech shoulders and gloves. The chest is sneak thief over studded legs and strider boots. The eagle eye goggles are another character creation unlock. The Magitech shoulders, gloves, and strider boots are all on and off gemstar items. The sneak thief can be purchased on the trading post and the studded set can be unlocked by completing the Legacy Armour Reward Tracks in both PvP and Movi World. The dyes used are Frost, Imperial Red, Black Cherry, Bloody Red, and Shadow Abyss. The female engineer is also embracing the techno vibe with the Scrapper's mask, Scarlet shoulders and gloves, and the Magitech legs and boots. The look is finished off by the Strider chest. This look is perhaps over the top, but I love the brilliant design of the Scarlet set, and it dies up a treat. You're gonna see them again, don't hate me. The Scrapper mask is unlocked by the Fixer Upper achievement, links in the pinned comment. The Scarlet shoulders and gloves, the Strider chest, and the Magitech boots and legs are all gem store items. Heavy on the gem store with this one, my apologies. But these items are the most themed to the engineer that I have unlocked, so please forgive. The dyes used are Dry Silver, Bloodstone Violet, Cyanide, Electro Blue, and Shadow Abyss. 
The male thief has daggers to spare with this silver and blue set. The head is char tier 1 cultural drovers with bladed gloves and boots. I use the Order of Whispers shoulder piece and the studded leg guards for their metallic details. I finished off the look with the gemstone viper's chest for its many, many, many daggers. Dyes used are Dry Silver, Shadow Abyss, Shadow Blue, and Bloodstone Dark Indigo. I use Shadow Abyss a lot. Anyway, moving on. For the Female Thief, I went full on Pirate, with the Magnus eye patch and the Peg Leg and Pirate Hook. <laughs> the Sneak Thief chest works brilliantly with the look along with the rascal shoulders and viper's legs. The magni patch, peg leg, pirate hook and viper's pieces are all gemstar items, but they're really, really cheap. Just saying. The sneak thief chest can be purchased on the trading post and the crafted rascal set is available there too. The dyes used are bloodstone dark coral, shadow red, Midnight Bronze, Shadow Abyss, Dry, Silver, and Oxblood. If you're drinking alcohol, every time I say Shadow Abyss, you should take a drink. Anyway, moving on. The Male Ranger is the second bone detail set, but themed very differently. I love the Accursed Vintage, it's very Mad Max, and I coloured the teeth bright red for an additional bit of punch. Um, I use the PvP Mist Walker set for the shoulders, the Rascal chest piece, and the Crichton armor gloves and boots. The look is finished off with the leg guards of the Rubicon. The Accursed Headpiece is a dungeon set armor piece from the Ura 5 man found on the Kershaw map. The Crichton armor is gem store, and the Rascals can be purchased on the trading post. As always, links in the pinned comment below. The dyes used are Bloody Red, Blood, Ivory, Midnight Gold, Bloodstone Dark Coral, and Shadow Abyss. <laughs> Again. For the female, I could not resist the achievement reward Hound Skin Mantle for my final Ranger. The headpiece is Rascals, with Tier 1 Drovers for gloves and legs. The chest is heritage medium skin and the boots are from the stalwart armor set which can be again unlocked by the legacy armor reward track for pvp and world world the dyes used are <laughs> shadow abyss midnight gold midnight fire chocolate and bloody red now to our final category the heavy armor professions Starting with the male warrior sporting yet another bestial bone set, I'm so sorry. <laughs> with the gem star, primeval shoulders, boots and gloves, please, please forgive me. I just feel like it fits so well with the holy thoughts of the char. <laughs> the chest skin is the karma pit fighters chest guard with the gem star fans leg guards and grasping dead visage from the Ara 5 man to finish off the set. The dyes used are Midnight Bronze, <laughs> Shadow Abyss, and Dry Silver. This really could be a drinking game. Right, okay. The female warrior set has illustrious ascended crafted shoulders with Bram's gem store chest and legs. The crafted gloves and boots are gladiators with no helm shown for this look. The dyes used are cinnamon, <laughs> shadow abyss, dusk, enameled legacy, ash and midnight red. On to the male revenant where I have gone for a light wielder. Now this could easily be a cookie cutter guardian set, but adding the resplendent curtain, we have a light side revenant. This head skin is another character creation unlock for the Revenant. My glow in the dark look uses again, I know I keep using them, radiant shoulders and gloves with the gem store primeval chest and legs. And I finish off the look with the season three living world achievement finale reward, the Masat Brogans. The dyes used are dry silver, <laughs> shadow abyss and permafrost. 
I, I am obsessed with Shadow Abyss. Oh dear. For the female revenant, I am following Ritlock's lead and ditching the blindfold. I am totally in love with the Char tier 3 set. So for this look, it's just Dreadnought from head to toe. You can call me lazy, I don't care, I just love this armour. It's a masterpiece and I wanted to show it off here in all its glory. The dyes used are <laughs> Shadow Abyss, Cinnamon, Hazel and Midnight Bronze. Now, I think I've gone a bit off-piste with this Toxic Guardian set that I have created. I have been trying to use the Toxic Shoulders and Gloves since I unlocked them many, many moons ago, and I feel like I have somewhat succeeded here. I have matched them with the Laystone Armour yet again, but I think it works really well, and I feel like I've created my own personal Toxic Avenger ensemble. The dyes used are... Starry Night, Enamelled Longevity, Shadow Turquoise, Cyanide, and Evening Grass. No Shadow Abyss. See, I can. I can make a look without it. And our final set for the female guardian is wearing the scarlet shoulders and gloves with prairie chest, legs, and vigil boots. I completed the look with the adventurer's spectacles, which are found in buried locked chests on the dry top map links below. The dyes used are <laughs> Shadow Abyss, Redemption and Permafrost. My two favourite looks for the char are for the ladies, the pirate set, and for the gentleman char, the fire starting elementalist. Trying to create 18 unique individual looks for the char was damn difficult. I tried to avoid using skins which clip the tail and where the shoulders just didn't seem to sit correctly, so I was harshly limited. These items really need some love from a dev. Head items often did not sit correctly or cut off the horns and the ears of my lovely char and I was just not having that, so I largely discarded them. The situation was made worse, of course, by the fact that I don't have all the items that I want to unlock in the game. Also question, why are all my char characters so massive on the character screen, so large I can't even see the top of their head, regardless of how diminutive they are in game? To all char owners and lovers, I am sending you a virtual hug. You deserve it. I have had but one char. I had realised the extent of the problems. So, what am I going to do? Well, my plan is to go away, work on my skin unlocks, and come back to the char. They deserve a far better lineup with more diversity than I have given you here, so I'm working on it. Bear with me. There will be love in the future. But, 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 but. The next race that will be in the crosshairs of our Fashion War saga is the legendary Hunting Norn. I hope you'll come back and join me then. If you are not already a player but feel inspired to jump into Guild Wars 2, there are referral links below for the free-to-play game, the Heart of Thorns expansion, and the Path of Fire expansion too. Thanks to the generosity of ArenaNet and their affiliate partner program, these referrals directly support my channel. If you would like to join me in game for some Fashion Wars fun, there are links below to the Crichton Herald Cross Region Guild. Now, I want to take a moment to thank all my patrons. Your support, advice and friendship allows me to keep making content for this brilliant game we all love so much. I can never thank you all enough, and I will keep working hard to create content worthy of your dedication. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and a thumbs down if you didn't. And as always, thanks for watching.